All right. Now let's watch what the fuck happened to Steven Seagal. I've been waiting to watch this for a while now. He's best buddies with Vladimir Putin and the Dalai Lama, who made him a deity. That's right, Steven Seagal is a deity. And he used... I guess Kevin Sorbo, maybe? Yeah, maybe Kevin Sorbo could be worse than Steven Seagal, I guess. His holy powers to succeed in the worlds of martial arts, Hollywood, rock and roll, law enforcement, and law breaking. Sensei Steven has brought us a few really great movies early on in his career, but somewhere between now and the 1990s, Steven's punches seem to have softened, and his box office appeal has been completely annihilated. But he's still good old Steven Seagal. You know, he's a, he's a conversation starter. Every time you mention Steven Seagal around a celebrity, they have a story about him, and it's never good. But he's always cranking out movies, and you gotta respect that, for better or worse. And my god, that amazing ponytail, which turned into some sort of tar-soaked toupee, and that glorious goatee, oh my. It's like a fuzzy face donut. He used to feel like a legit threatening force on screen. What I don't understand is, like, why he chose to go with that hairline. It's like, it's fake, right? So... Like, what you had the choice. Why did you go with that V shape? Like, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? If you're going to go with plugs or if you're going to go with, like, any kind of fake hair, why'd you go with the sharpest V possible? Like, to throw people off the scent is like, ain't nobody going to think I, ain't nobody going to think I got this fake ass V as a choice. They must think I, this is just how my hair grows. Where am I at? You know what I mean? Like, I guess that was his, like, five head uh, thinking, where just, like, no one will think it's fake if they see how fucking V-shaped it is. You know what I mean? A fuzzy face donut. He used to feel like a legit threatening force on screen. Like a kicking, punching young Marlon Brando. I don't know about that. But nowadays, he feels like a slumping, sitting, old Marlon Brando. Without the acting chops. Just the karate chops. You want to kill her, kill her. I don't mind if you kill her, you know, because I don't know her at all. The dude is a badass, and I... What? Wait. Wait, what? Without the acting chops. Just the karate chops. You want to kill her, kill her. That's crazy. He just straight knocked the random female hostage out, dude. That's wild. I don't mind if you kill her, you know, because I don't know her at all. <laughs> oh, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He punched the dude. I thought he knocked the girl out. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, he punched the dude. The dude is a badass, and I'm not sure if that's 100% true or not, but it is in my heart, and that's all that matters. Steven Seagal certainly believes in Steven Seagal. If your title is Sunday Fun Day tomorrow, don't stream, please. What? What, do you just, like, not appreciate Saturday Fun Day or something? Like, what's going on? That's so odd. Just anti fun, is that what's going on? The gall. He never rehearses, if you couldn't tell. And he even dissed Liam Neeson's punching skills. This journalist suddenly said, Hey, what do you think of Steven Seagal saying you don't know how to punch? I was like, what? <laughs> and like I said, it seems like every co-star has a horror story about working with good old Stevie boy. And so does every wife and girlfriend. Pretty much every female ever. So how did this lovable fighting machine become one of the most hated celebrities ever of all time?
find out on today's episode of WTF, where we ask the question that's on everyone's mind, what the f*** happened to Steven Seagal? I just met with the Dalai Lama, and he, in his wisdom, decided to make me a deity, <laughs> and he gives a... I mean, he's also fucking awful, for the record. Damn, bro, you really love Steven Seagal? I do. The, the quaint karang the dong the ding the dong the dong whatever <laughs> and then so man, I, you know i feel a difference i feel like i an enlightenment a sense of <laughs> that i can do something now <laughs> and everything just seems to come into place for me spiritually and in my career and i feel like it's certain certain things now that never made sense to me make sense to me on a universal level and south park really ended this man's career though i mean he did it to himself as well and he's like a weird right-wing reactor too one of the most hated celebrities ever of all time? Find out on today's episode of WTF, where we ask the question that's on everyone's mind, what the f*** happened to Steven Seagal? I just met with the Dalai Lama, and he, in his wisdom, decided to make me a deity. <laughs> and he gives a I mean, he's also fucking awful, for the record. Damn, bro, you really love Steven Seagal? I do. The the quaint karang the dong the ding the dong the dong whatever. <laughs> and then so man, I, you know, I feel a difference. I feel like I, an enlightenment, a sense of <laughs> that I can do something now, <laughs> and everything just seems to come into place for me spiritually and in my career. And I feel like it's certain certain things now that never made sense to me make sense to me on a universal level. And South Park really ended this man's career, though. I mean, he did it to himself as well, and he's like a weird right-wing reactionary QAnon loser, but, like, like, <laughs> every time I see him, I think, Rob Schneider is a stapler, like, no matter what. I'm not even, like, a big South Park head, but just iconic. Iconic uh, way to eviscerate a person. did ruin every movie he was in and his assistant comes up to him and says hey steven uh your your ex-wife called you can't bring the kids over this weekend you tell that <laughs> she doesn't get those kids over here i'll break her neck <laughs> 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 but to truly understand what the f happened to steven seagal we what must start wearing? at the beginning his full name is steven frederick seagal frederick and he's a black belt in Aikido, a style of martial arts that both defends against the attacker while also protecting that same attacker from injury. The primary goal of Aikido is to overcome oneself instead of cultivating violence or aggression. It's like peaceful violence. You don't want to hurt anybody, do you, Steven? <laughs> 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 But how did he get into show business, you ask? Well, he was Super Agent Mike Ovitz's martial arts teacher, and Ovitz was the most powerful guy in Hollywood at that time. And he got Seagal into doing choreography and training early on. He was actually Sean Connery's martial arts instructor for Never Say Never Again, and broke Connery's wrist. Rest in peace. The super agent Michael Ovitz was so super that he believed that he could turn anyone, and I mean anyone, into a movie star. And that's how Steven Seagal became a movie star. Almost that's like crazy. the plot of She's All That. And Steven Seagal is all that. This led to the film Above the Law in 1988. Seagal wrote the screenplay, which he always said was based on his CIA experience, which is all bullshit. One of Steven's many fabrications, there is absolutely no record of Steven Seagal working for the CIA. But then again, why would they be? Which means he probably is telling the truth. So actually, I, I believe you, Steven. I believe you now. <laughs> then came Hard to Kill in 1990. It was a much bigger hit. This action flick had the largest three-day opening in February at the time of its release. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think the reason why I've always kind of despised Steven Seagal is because my dad loved watching these shit-ass fucking movies. And it just, like, developed this, uh, this, like, he, 
he watched all the Steven Seagal movies, you know what I mean? And it, for me, I was just like, this sucks. Like, why the fuck do you love these movies? Like, they're so ass. And it just basically, I have this, like, Pavlovian response to it, like the top of the hour ad break, you know what I mean? Like, as your father figure, I serve a three-minute ad break at the top of everyone's, uh, you know, as, as everyone's father figure. I serve a top of the hour ad break, right? And, of course, like, that has probably developed a trauma response in you, especially if you haven't subscribed for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Because you're like, oh, fuck. A three-minute ad break is upon us, and I'm not sub subscribed right now. <sighs> Which is okay, you know? Where mama at? I ain't paying no child support. Where mama at, though? Um. Anyway, bro, I can't believe how real and universal the Middle Eastern dad to Steven Seagal pipeline is. I just don't know where the fuck it comes from. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, but uh, the three minute ad break is upon us. Here's the here it is. Release with 9.2 million, and it went on to gross just under 50 million dollars. Back when that was a lot of money. I remember you. <laughs> then Steven Seagal really wanted to play the Danny Glover part in Predator 2, but the director Stephen Hopkins said no way. And Seagal went crazy with anger. And so instead of Predator 2, he did a movie called Marked for Death. Marked for Death was named the most violent movie of 1990 by the National Coalition of TV Violence. Back then, she was popping. They were, like, trying to fucking censor violence and stuff in movies. That was so funny. And Steven Seagal says this film has the best fight scene he's ever done as well as his favorite kill. That's awesome. Up next was Out for Justice, which many people think is Steven Seagal's best movie. He plays an Italian cop, cultural appropriation, and while promoting this flick, his ego was on overdrive and gave an infamous interview on Arsenio where he basically said that he's the only legit action hero. I think that that's a matter of opinion, that he was the champion anyway. <laughs> that's Out a wild Justice thing to say. Probably the best you it is a wild thing to say when, you know, this is an era where, like, this is an era where it's pretty much like all superhero action flicks. Like like that the Marvel back then was like I said a juiced up foreigner that towers above all Americans that you can't really understand. Like that was every fucking every action movie, I mean every every Marvel movie replaced that with like action movies. My girlfriend is dreaming of going on dates with you. Stop it. That's. You didn't have to write that in the chat, but. Okay. I will try and stop myself. Use of Steven Seagal's skills. His character is surrounded by a great supporting cast. And so there's always somebody there to pick up the slack. Just enough steviness. Not too much. Just right. This is actually a well-directed, dark, gritty crime thriller that just so happens to have a big, dumb action hero in the center of it. Tell your girlfriend, I'm already dating your mom. And it works really well. Seagal didn't suck the artistic soul out of this one. It's probably his best acting, even with the ridiculous Brooklyn accent. And the villain in the movie is absolutely terrifying. Ooh. The kill. original title for Out for Justice was The Price of Our Blood, but Warner Brothers demanded it be changed to keep in line with Seagal's other hit films that all had three words in the title, Above the Law, Hard to Kill, Marked for Death, Out for Justice. You know, three, the Holy Trinity, third time's a charm, three's company. 
They saw a winning pattern with that three-word title thing, and the Warner Brothers and their sister Dot were not going to break that winning pattern. <laughs> and like everyone, the director has said that he hated working with Steven Seagal, because Steven Seagal was always showing up late and acting like Steven Seagal. Seagal was infamous for actually hitting his stuntmen, saying that it looked more realistic when he would actually punch them. But you know, acting, you don't actually have to have to punch them because it's, it's a movie. But Steven Seagal did not care about that. So legendary- Low key, like, it probably doesn't matter because you're being punched by Steven Seagal and there's 0% chance that that's like a real fucking- That's a real good punch. Like, other people, like, Hong Kong cinema um, and, and other uh, Asian cinema have uh, realistic action sequences where there are real punches and shit. And those motherfuckers actually know how to kick and punch. So it does actually make it better. Meanwhile, Steven Seagal does not know how to punch, so doubt it. Very tough guy, Gene LaBelle, reportedly allegedly taught him a lesson that he'll never forget. Well, at least his pants won't forget. And I'll let Kevin Hart tell the story because, you know, he's Kevin Hart. Kevin, please. It smells like shit everywhere. The guy choked the shit out of Steven Seagal. It's marked for death. <laughs> and literally, all you heard was... <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is the story of the stunt coordinator that Steven Seagal pissed off, who was just like, who he uh, challenged to a fight. And then the dude choked him so hard, he shit his pants in front of 30 people. <laughs> How satisfying is that when the asshole on the set shits his pants? <laughs> How great is that? Even Lorne Michaels took a shot at Steven Seagal when Nicolas Cage hosted. Well, well they, they probably think I'm the biggest jerk who's, who's ever been on the show. No, no, that would be Steven Seagal. Well... The SNL cast members have all said that he was a horrible host and took himself way too seriously and lacked the simplest understanding of comedy. He was also a, a, a mean, meanie, meanie face to everybody on set in history. <laughs> Seagal's career went into overdrive. Okay, we got to find it. We got, come on, we got the CIA in the chat. Can we find that? Drive with Under Siege. But this was the beginning of the end. Because if you watch the movie, you can obviously tell that director Andrew Davis, who also directed Above the Law, builds the whole movie around Tommy Lee Jones, which was probably a good idea. And still, it was a hit. This is Steven Seagal's only starring film to have a... Update, I'm canceling Maddie Healy. You start dating a Muslim girl, then boom. Bro, in 2023, he's he is not posting this in 2023. Come on, bro. This is like this shit would have went hard in like 2005. You know what I mean? No, no, he posted this now, but it's a it's a tweet from 2021. I assume, right? Or did he? Or did he post this uh, back in the tweet itself is dated twenty twenty one. Oh my god! Did he just post this? I can just check. Why the fuck am I asking chat? Chat literally just sees a fucking number on screen and goes, "Oh my god," uh, and and assumes that number is like. story is from yeah the story is from today he just posted it i just saw it he posted it 37 minutes ago okay the story is from today but the joke is from 2021 a screenshot at least but the joke would have fucking popped off in like 2003 it's a 2004 2005 ass joke 
Bro, this is like me acting. This is what the fuck? Did he forget how to act? Like I thought he knew how to read lines at least. What the fuck? The reason this sketch is horrible is because he's supposed to act all goofy and nice when another family is members in the room and then intimidating and scary when alone and is along with Chris Farley, but he refused to act goofy, so we just did the one thing and the whole time and ruined the joke. Oh, that's the I was like, where is the joke? I was trying to understand where the joke was, and I, I literally did not understand what was going on. It was just like him being like an intimidating dad or something. This is the one instance where explaining the joke was necessary because he just did not craft it. We're going to party. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> well, uh, I guess it wouldn't matter if I did. Chris Farley looks like annoyed. Like, he looks annoyed at this point. He's just like, come on, man. Give me something. Like, he looks un... That was very bad. Oh, my God. Let's get back on to Rotten it. Tomatoes. It's a good one. It's one of the best diehard ripoffs. But this time, there's battleships. We want the Panani. I'm going to pee. I'll be back in a second. After that, Steven Seagal directed his eco-warrior passion project on Deadly Ground which was much mocked. Roger Ebert, you know, the famous film critic guy that I always quote, said, if you like seeing stuff blown up real good, this is a movie for you. So I guess it's a movie for me. speech at the end of the movie was originally 40 minutes long, but test audiences laughed and booed in the theater, so it was cut down to only 7 minutes, which is still painfully long. But yeah, pretty much everybody calls this one laughable and absurd. And Steven won Worst Director at the Razzies, and the film was nominated for six. <laughs> Then he followed it up with Under Siege 2, Dark Territory. And the only reason he's even in this sequel is because the studio let him direct his passion project, you know, on Deadly Ground, the one that we, we just talked about. Seagal would arrive on set daily and change up entire scenes on the fly, which just screwed everything up. But this did lead to a funny parody on Roseanne, so let's watch that. Then came Executive Decision in 1996. It's a nice little 90s flick, but not because of Steven Seagal. Many people actually claim that the movie's only good because Steven Seagal dies early on. Spoiler alert. In fact, he was so bad in this pretty good movie that he was nominated for Worst Supporting Actor at those Razzies. And Steven Seagal attacked John Leguizamo after John Leguizamo laughed at something Steven Seagal said, thinking it was a joke. But no, Steven Seagal does not tell jokes. You never laugh at Steven, even though sometimes he's pretty dang hilarious. But then there was Glimmer Man. And this was the low point of his time with Warner Brothers. The combination of Keenan Ivory Waynes and Steven Seagal were no match for Bette Midler, Goldie Hawn, and Diane Keaton, as the Glimmer Man opened in second place behind those first wives and their club. I have something in my closet right now. A completely clear up dead bruise on your forehead. What bruise? That bruise. And of course, Steven Seagal was continuously late for shooting, annoying that Wayne's brother. And at this time, Seagal had become deeply spiritual and no longer wanted to kill people in his movies, which was a big problem because the only reason people go see Steven Seagal movies is to watch him kill people. The year 1997 brought us Fire Down Below. At this point, Steven Seagal was kind of over, with Fire Down Below being much mocked for its sped up fight scenes and all of those scenes with Steven playing the guitar. It was too much. 
And this one was only nominated for four Razzie you know, Awards. You know he so put it there that. himself. Then there was the Patriot. No. You know. You know he he wanted to put the fucking guitar scenes himself. You know. No, not the one with Mel Gibson. It was an independent direct-to-video film, the first of many, which he would do, where Steven Seagal plays the world's greatest immunologist, who's also an ex-CIA hitman. Yes, it's 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 just as crazy as it sounds. It got poo-pooed on by the critics for being a Steven Seagal movie with barely any Steven Seagal action. But those same critics poo-pooed on Steven Seagal for having too much action. For that poor Steven Seagal, he just can't win. <laughs> Next, we got Exit Wounds in 2001, the highly anticipated pairing of Steven Seagal and DMX. DMX? What and the of fuck? course, nobody liked working with Steven Seagal on this one, especially DMX. Surprise, surprise. It was a financial hit, actually, taking in almost $80 million worldwide on a $33 million budget. Do the math, it's, it, that's, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> Another DMX carry. Yeah. That's a DMX carry, 100%. DMX was goaded in fucking movies. What was the one with Jet Li? Fuck. Cradle to the Grave, yeah. Or Romeo Must Die? X gonna give it to you. Man, that shit was awesome, dude. That shit went hard in Turkey, dude. Then came an action film about Alcatraz that's not The Rock. It's called Half Past Dead. And it was a big floppy flop, flopping all over the place. This time, Steven decided to work with a different rapper, Ja Rule. And this was Steven Seagal's last big theatrical release not including Machete in 2010, but Machete doesn't count. At this point, Steven was traveling with a Buddhist advisor, and on any given day, the Buddhist advisor would give verdicts on Steven's karma, and if the karma was unfavorable, Steven would not film that day, and that pissed everybody off, what? even Buddha. And like all the other directors, this director said that Steven Seagal was awful. He was a disruptive force on set that would show up late for no reason. Hey, but this one has three... He's so Donald Trump. He's so Trump coded every time. 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, and that's that's better than zero. Steven's movie career was slipping fast, but Steven is a businessman. And he took on the wild world of the energy drink business. Yep, Steven Seagal put his name on an energy drink in 2005. Steven Seagal's Lightning Bolt. Have you tried it? I'm going to take a sip now. Good to be the king, isn't it? And guess what? This could happen to you if you drank lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Try it today. What? It's electric. And even though Steven's shadowy... It was billed as the Asian experience energy drink. That's awesome. It's electric. And even though Steven's shadowy past has been questioned, there is no question that he does have some mafia ties. See, there was this producer that Steven Seagal made many movies with, but they had a falling out in the year 2000. And one day, Steven Seagal was ordered into a car and taken into a Brooklyn restaurant, where he met with a Gambino family captain, some guy named Sonny. And in the meeting, Sonny, ordered Steven Seagal to go back to working with his old producer and to pay the Gambino crime family $150,000 every time he made a film. So right then and there, Steven Seagal gave them $700,000. As he what? left the meeting, one of those mafia guys put his arm around Steven Seagal, looked him in the eyes and said, Eh, if you would have said the wrong thing, they would have killed you, you see? Would have been sleeping with the fishes. Oh my god, 
Steven Seagal almost had a comeback when Jackie Chan suggested him as the villain in Rush Hour 3, but that didn't happen. And he was offered a role by Sylvester Stallone in The Expendables, but he turned down. He turned down a role in The Expendables? What a fucking dumbass. In that film because he had a feud with one of the producers. So Rush Hour 3 and The Expendables. Oh my god, he had... Why do they keep offering him a fucking life raft too? Like, there's no... He had no business being in any of these productions. Expendables would have been pretty big comebacks that would have certainly led to better things. But no. I did kind of like Machete. He played the villain in this Robert Rodriguez magnum opus, and this was the first theatrical release that Steven Seagal had been a part of in 18 years. Fuck. So it looked like the silver screen was done with this kung fu fighter, and it was time for Steven Seagal to live in reality. Television. One of the greatest and most bizarre things to ever appear on a TV screen. This is why we're on a Seagal arc. Many people are wondering, like, why do you keep watching Seagal shit? It's because Steven Seagal's Lawman, a 2007 A&E television show where Steven Seagal lied and said that he was a fucking cop in Jefferson Parish for 25 years. Green is the reality show Steven Seagal Lawman. Steven Seagal was a reserve deputy chief with the Jefferson Parish Louisiana Sheriff's Office, which was a totally symbolic ceremonial status. But don't tell Steven that. He received this honorary status after Steven Seagal trained some of the officers in the late 80s, and the sheriff was so impressed that he asked Seagal to join the force, symbolically. But then when he needed to do something and have a reality show, he came back to the force and, and helped them arrest people. Can you imagine being arrested by Steven Seagal? Like, just, just sit there, imagine. What's going through these people's minds? Oh my goodness. I make a living in the movies, but for the past 20 years, this is why I think it's the greatest TV show of all time. Like, it's one of my favorite. This is actually one of my favorite shows that we watch. I've also been a cop. The show was curiously dropped from the schedule in 2011, and no reason was ever given, although it is suspected that it has something to do with a scene filmed for the show where Seagal drove a SWAT tank into a man's home, who was... We are going to be, I don't know if the episodes in Maricopa County with everyone's favorite fucking racist sheriff are actually on this, but I would love to, uh, we, we have to watch these episodes. I kind of, this is a spoiler alert. Suspected of running illegal cockfights, the, the rooster kind, and tragically, unfortunately, the operation ended in the death of a puppy. That's right, Steven Seagal killed a puppy with a tank. Yeah, also, um... There was an internal affairs investigation into Steven Seagal's actions in Louisiana as well, and he basically quit the Louisiana Jefferson County Parish Sheriff's Department because he wanted to not get hit with an internal affairs investigation. That's the other side of the story as well. That's why he went to Arizona, to Maricopa County, to find another fucking psychotic sheriff who gave him like an honorary deputy badge. It's, it was just an accident, though. Anyone who's ever seen Out for Justice knows that Steven Seagal loves puppies, and I think he works with PETA or whatever. But Steven Seagal was sued for those damages of killing a puppy with a tank at a cockfight. After some paperwork mix-ups, the case was dropped. Then in 2010, he dropped the reality- When are you watching this? We need a data schedule. Brother, I've been watching this. I've been watching episodes of Laman every night. For 25 years. That's why half the fucking memes that I do, like when I talk like Liz, when I say, where mama at? Those are all from the show. A lot of people don't know this, though, because for some weird reason, I think the Hassan Eclipse Industrial Complex has not been clipping out the Steven Seagal Lawman reacts. I don't know why, but they haven't clipped out any of them. So people don't even know about it. No, I'm not even kidding. 
heard uh, people were saying that like uh, people were saying that they have no idea that this was something that we were reacting to. I guess they can't be on YouTube. There's a couple. Holy fuck. One from Hassan Piker at 33K views, 14K views, another one. And it's weird because it's like literally some of the best reacts. Please link. I'm tired of spamming. Please, 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 please. What? This is. Thanks, chatter. I don't understand. There's yeah, Aikido. Yeah. Reality from his television, and did a fictional cop drama show called True Justice, where he delivered justice that was true. And while he had been kicking ass doing all those things, he had also been drowning in straight to video movies for the past 20 years. I will now read off the titles of all those motion pictures. The Foreigner, Today You Die, Black Dawn, Mercenary, Mercenary for Justice, Belly of the Beast, Clementine, Into the Sun, Submerged, Flight of Fury, Urban Justice. Yes, we've been watching Lawman, and yes, the reason why I love it is because this chatter is correct. It shows how corrupt and worthless the institution of policing is that some random untrained actor who isn't officially employed as a cop is allowed to participate in raids and arrests. The fact that this shit isn't unconstitutional is ridiculous, and it literally goes back to the days when a sheriff could just round up any old asshole as a part of his posse, and this isn't the Old West. That shit should be completely illegal. It also kind of shows that there is not much difference between Steven Seagal and all the other fucking untrained dipshits that are, like, actual full-blown cops. And most importantly, it just basically shows how rotten to the core of the policing is as an institution because it's an occupying force in black neighborhoods. They show Steven Seagal's 2007 reality TV show Lawman basically fucking is supposed to be pro-cop. It's a sequence of pro-cop television that is supposed to make you understand and and um, side with the cops. And, and, you know, you're supposed to develop sympathy for police officers and how difficult the job is. And yet it basically misses the mark by the widest of margins. It It is the greatest effortless anti-police content that we have the the probably the best it's like better than audit the audit every episode features steven seagal and the band of roving thugs that uh he he follows along in his ride along uh unironically racial profiling and mass incarcerating random black people for the crime of existing in the periphery of steven seagal's now trademark term aikido vision Pistol Whipped, Against the Dark, The Keeper, A Dangerous Man, Shadow Man, A Good Man, Born to Raise Hell, Maximum Conviction, Attack Force, <laughs> Force of Execution, Gutch. Me and my brother tried to watch one of these like later Steven Seagal movies, ironically, and it was fucking hard, dude. I think it was, like, one of his latest movies. We tried to watch it, like, haha, like, maybe we'll get something out of it. Like, maybe it'll be funny. And it literally is hard to watch, even ironically. Maybe the 80s ones could work. You could, like, hate watch the 80s ones and, like, laugh at it and shit. Not this new stuff, man. The new stuff is difficult to watch, even as a joke. Shot straight. Absolution. Sniper. Special Ops. Code of Honor, The Asian Connection, The Perfect Weapon, End of a Gun, Cartels, China Salesman, General Com- Oh my god, Mike Tyson? End of a Gun, Cartel- 
George St. Pierre is in this? Hells. China. Mike Tyson. Salesman. General Commander. Beyond the law. Oh, DMX did another one? What the oh. fuck? Out of reach. Out for a kill. Driven to kill. Contract to kill. And something called Kill Switch, which has the worst fight scene editing anyone's eyes have ever seen. And now I will let your eyes see them. And remember, children, this is an actual scene from an actual movie. I have not altered or touched anything. Th this, this right here is a real movie. Fuck you! Oh, dude. <laughs> they edited this like a Korean reality TV show. Uh, 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 uh. Steven Seagal is notorious for being lazy and is often dubbed in his own movies because he refuses to do ADR. And there seems to be a trend of directors and editors basically walking off of Steven Seagal movies. And a lot of the time he refuses to stand up in many scenes and forces many films to revolve around him sitting down, possibly to hide that jolly kung fu Santa belly. But he has kept busy with his writing. He wrote an actual book. The deep state and the hijacking of America, the way of the shadow wolves. In 2017, called The Way of the Shadow Wolves, The Deep State and the Hijacking of America. A book about a secret globalist agenda to dis- Oh my god, he fucking- He wrote the QAnon plot before QAnon popped off. Like, or while QAnon was popping off. Is Steven Seagal Q? Destroy the United States, and only one man can stop it. And that man is a thinly veiled version of Steven Seagal. That's right, Steven Seagal wrote a book about a version of himself who's not himself fighting the deep state, which is kind of Oh my god. Foreword by Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who was also the reason why Steven Seagal was, again, deputized in Arizona. Uh, because Sheriff Joe Arpaio deputized him so he could do that fucking... Uh, so he could continue his TV show, Steven Seagal's Lawman, where he ended up killing a puppy uh, in that raid that you saw in a tank. Um, that is something that happened. Yes, Joe Arpaio is good friends with Steven Seagal. A version of himself who's not himself fighting the deep state, which is kind of based on a true story, he says. He calls it a fictional book based on reality. Wow. Because of that, stop acting like you're just finding out about this. We know you're an avid Chapo fan. I am an avid Chapo fan. I do not remember this reading that they did, this reading series that they did once. And I'm gonna learn how to read. And he comes out and he said, I just read the greatest script I've ever read in my life. <laughs> he goes, Really? Who wrote it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> And even though Steven has had his fair share of cinematic crap, it's his personal life that has truly destroyed his legacy. He has had several women come forward to accuse him of casting couch situations, and he's been one of the most hashtag me too guys of that whole movement. It's crazy because it's like, he is like under the radar, this part is true, but because he's Steven Seagal, like no one really gives a shit about him, so like he just basically flew under the radar the me too movement and also he's in fucking uh russia so and i'm not sure about the evidence or anything of these damning accusations but they all sound the same there feels to be some legitimacy there but what do i know don't trust anything i say ever and even wait what yeah He's in Russia? You didn't know? Steven Seagal is now like an envoy of Russia. He now literally he now literally does propaganda for the Russian state. And I'm not saying that with like the whole, oh my god, uh, it seems like it's 9 o'clock in Moscow type shit. Like he literally, you know, I'm not like a Blue Anon type person uh, or a Russiagate conspiracist. But he like literally does, he does straight up Russian propaganda. Like he will... Yeah, he tours DPR and LPR with the Russian military. He'll go to sites that have been, like, bombed uh, by the Russian military and go, here, as you can see, Ukrainians bombed this site on their own. <laughs> what? 
Jojo the Mofo is your biggest fan? Wait, is that the person? Are you Jojo the Mofo? Is this yours? Joe Blow Originals? No, right? Why are you guys saying we? No, Joe Blow is a website. We play Atomic Heart on Monday, or will you get canceled because it's made by Russians? Yeah, I, I will play Atomic Heart, but I'm a little, I'm a little worried that JoJo is a W streamer. Oh, nice. I'm a little worried that it's gonna suck. Not that it's made by Russia. I don't give a fuck about that. JoJo, friend of Belize, JoJo. Bioshock Infinite is literally $8. I don't give a fuck. I've played it on stream, and I've played it before off stream, too. What do you want me to do? Fucking play it again? He's friends with I'm Dante and Rage. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I'm worried that... I'm worried that it's not going to be good, the Atomic Heart game. I've, like... The more I looked at the... Um, there are rumors about Atomic Heart among Russian game devs. I don't care. I don't care about, like... Guys, I literally do not give a shit if Atomic Heart is, like, directly funneling supplies to the Russian government, okay? I don't care. I have given more money to the Ukrainian arms than I will ever be able to fund Russia by purchasing one video game or doing literally fucking endless amounts of marketing, okay? I'm an American taxpayer. I don't know if you know this. I'm the top taxpaying bracket. I have literally handed Ukrainians multiple fucking, multiple anti-tank uh, uh, weapons, okay? So that's number one. Number two, I've also raised funds for Ukrainians as well. I, I, I don't believe in this, like, consumer-led uh, boycott. It might actually be successful because it's, like, if it's backed by the State Department or whatever, but I don't give a shit. Um... I'm not a I I don't do fucking uh, consumer uh, boycotts like this. I think it's stupid. Regardless though, regardless regardless um I don't think that it's going to be good. I'm I'm a little worried that it's not going to be good. More criminal controversy came in the year 2020, which is the current year that I am making this. Seagal settled charges with the Securities and Exchange Commission for unlawfully promoting cryptocurrency when he failed to disclose to his followers on social media that he had been paid to promote cryptocurrencies. And who the hell is trusting Steven Seagal with cryptocurrency advice? That's and, so funny. And what the hell is cryptocurrency? I'm, I'm still, I'm still not, not really sure. But I want some. Send it to me now. Steven Seagal is cockpuncher. Awesome. So what the f happened to Steven Seagal? Well, he's lived in Russia since 2016 with his BFF, Russian President Vladimir Putin. Yep, Putin and Seagal, best buddies forever. Now that sounds like a reality show I want to watch. Can you? Oh my God, that's such a good take. Yes, I would literally, I would literally nonstop. I would watch that. Oh my God, I wish that was a fucking show. Oh God, that'd be so sick. Imagine. Say what you want about Steven Seagal, there is no doubt that he's left his mark on cinema, and maybe a few bruises too. The man is a true inspiration, an inspiration in the world of martial arts, an inspiration to anyone who's ever wanted to make it up there on the silver screen, an inspiration to anyone who's ever thrown a punch or kicked a foot, and the inspiration- or, or killed old ladies with a gun in a high-speed chase for no fucking reason, even though it makes no sense to, for him to do so, as, like, the, s the hero. Or cashiers, apparently. Just in general, like, civilians who are defending themselves, oftentimes not even defending themselves from Steven Seagal, but should be defending themselves from Steven Seagal. Inspiration for a really cool rockin' band. Steven Seagal's. <laughs> He started out as a great martial artist with some great screen presence. 
who worked with some talented filmmakers and made a few decent flicks. But his ego got bigger than his belly, and Steven took control of his uncontrollable career, and that was a bad idea, forever dooming him to a world of straight-to-video garbage. Is there a comeback in the works? I don't think he was ever fucking a great martial artist, okay? Aikido is like, whatever. I doubt it. I mean, it worked for JCVD and other action heroes of that time, but Steven is a different breed. He has often said that Under Siege 3 and Above the Law 2 are in development, although he said that in 2016 and we ain't seen nothing. And he's considered running for office, uh, governor of Arizona, so we have uh, that to look forward to. Oh, that's a perfect state for him to actually run and win, by the way. Oh, my God. I think he could literally become the governor if he ran for governor. And he's one of those Trump supporters. And we all know that's a big no-no in the land of Hollywood land. So that might have something to do with something. I don't know. So I guess if you lie about your training and your badass past and treat everyone like crap and make nothing but lazy, horrible movies for decades and get involved with illegal criminal activity and act like a jerk all the time and hashtag me too a bunch of people, then yeah, yeah, your, your movie career, uh, it might suffer. And boy, howdy, did Steven suffer. <laughs> Body shaming isn't cool. And if p people shame you on the internet, you have to make sure that you stay, you stay strong and tell everyone you're proud of how you look. But the myths, lies, and legends that surround... He is a, a bit of a body positivity hero when you think about it. Like... Actually, I never really thought about it that way. Low key. Think about it. He's showing you, like, oh, you guys all love when Lizzo's doing fucking squats and cartwheels or whatever the fuck she's doing. But all of a sudden, when Steven Seagal is doing a big boy advocacy, everyone's like, oh, man, yeah. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, when Steven Seagal is doing martial arts sitting down, you have an issue with that. I see how it is. Steven Seagal have made his story even more interesting. He's way more interesting than any character he's ever played on screen. It's true. Nobody really knows the truth about the legend of Steven, which has elevated him to a status beyond just human. He's a symbol, an ass-kicking symbol, that blurs the lines between truth and fiction, east and west, art and trash, good and evil. And maybe that's exactly what we need right now. So go grab one of those few good Steven Seagal movies, pop them in your VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, streaming, whatever you got. Sit back and appreciate the ass-kickingness that is Steven Seagal. Domo arigato, sensei, Steven Seagal. This is the true nature of Shinyang. He also, yeah, oh, I forgot. He, he claims he's Native American. What he said. <laughs> yep. Um, on that note, let's watch some fucking Steven Seagal lawman. <laughs> 